In the meantime, let's talk to one of the lawmakers who will be questioning Tony Hayward later today. Congressman John Dingell is the Chairman Emeritus of the Energy and Commerce Committee. And, sir, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Delighted to be here. Good morning. We, we've heard already from Bart Stupak that uh, Tony Hayward's going to be sliced and diced today coming into this. BP's contention is that it's too early to know what exactly happened and why this oil spill uh, occurred in the first place. But what's your sense of things as, as you head into this hearing today? Well, if I were in BP, I wouldn't be very comfortable about the hearing coming on. simple fact is that we have to get a lot of questions answered. And BP is really one of the two components of the answering. The other is, of course, the government enforcement agencies. And from your understanding of things right now, from the evidence you've seen, do you think this was an accident or something that could have and should have been prevented? Uh, accidents are oftentimes things that could have and should have been prevented. I think here there was a lack of redundancy. They didn't have a plan for untoward events. They didn't have a redundant plan on that. Their equipment doesn't seem to have done what it is supposed to have done. The regulatory process doesn't appear to have worked. And it appears that uh, there are a lot of answers that we yet have to get. Is this a situation where you believe this is a, a BP-specific problem? Or do you think that this is a broader issue with the industry overall? Well, questions of this kind always indicate that there's a lot more that has to be gone into. Frankly, the industry was functioning under what is pretty much a deregulation plan. And you'll remember that there was tremendous pressure in the prior administration to reduce uh, regulation of all kinds. And you see what happened both in the securities industry, the banking industry, and now, of course, the deep water drilling. In deep water drilling, I assume, based on your comments, that you agree with the moratorium that's been put on for six months at least. Well, if, if you have a screw-up of this kind, both in the, of regulatory character and, quite frankly, of uh, practice in the field by the regulated industry, you've got to shut it down when you have the kind of consequences you have here. Although, We're talking about $20 billion, and that's only a part of the cost. Although shutting it down is something that will have some tremendous impact on the economy there as well. We've heard from congressmen who represent areas down in Louisiana who say this will be a huge impact in terms of the number, tens of thousands of workers who are going to be put out of work as a result. Is there well, some way to offer consolation for them? Well, I don't think consolation other than a paycheck is going to help those people. But the harsh fact of the matter is uh, you're faced with two curses here. The first is that you put a lot of people out of work and on economic inconvenience of rather serious sort. The other alternative is you might have a second event like you had on the, the BP spill, and then we'll have a glorious mess down there. We have not brought the first one under control yet. Obviously, getting that uh, under control has to be the top priority, but if, if these people are put out of work, is it your contention that BP should pick up the check for those lost workers or that the government should do it? Well, the government didn't, didn't bring this about. BP did. And I think everybody's going to be looking to see to it that BP, I think properly, uh, makes whole everybody who, quite frankly, they have inflicted a severe hurt upon. The state, the cities, the communities, the workers, the environment, tourists, all kinds of different industries all up and down the Gulf Coast. You start thinking about the potential cost if you think BHP should be paying for the cost of workers who are shut down by a government-imposed moratorium, and maybe that $20 billion they set aside wouldn't be enough to cover it all. Well, I think we're going to have to find out whether it is enough. Very truthfully, uh, there are already discussions within the company indicating that, A, uh, they don't want to cover the workers who are laid off because of the moratorium, mm -hmm. and, B, that the costs are going to be significantly higher. And, again, your sense as the company comes in today, is there anything that they could say to make you feel better about the company, make you feel like they're not going to be on the hot seat, or is this, you've already seen enough to make you feel you understand what's happening here? Well, in the old days, we used to have a great friend by the name of Frank Zard. Frank would come in and he'd swath himself in the truth when we'd go after him, and the end result was he was almost bulletproof. And how do you, how do you kick the fellow around who says, well, I made a mistake? this is wrong and uh, I, I think that's the beginning of the company but uh, the company's testimony but second 
They have to be truthful. And third, they have to come up with some answers to some questions that are yet out there. All right. Congressman Dingell, thank you very much for your time today. We'll be watching the hearings closely. Pleasure, pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Thank you.